morning, and welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. Well, the Flash is back for its last season. Um, now, before we talk about that, like, I, <laughs> you ever notice when you cut yourself on accident doing some, you know, doing something dumb, like, that hurts a lot more than, you know, if you get seriously hurt. Like, the initial aftermath of getting seriously hurt hurts a lot less. It's also, I think it's just the annoyance of, like, how fucking stupid am I that, you know, that that I got cut doing this. And and what it was for me this morning was getting laundry out of my hamper. Uh, I have one of those big basket hampers that has, like, um, these little holes on the side. I'm not entirely sure what purpose the holes in the laundry basket have. And... I stick my hand in a little too overzealously, I guess, and uh, I cut my finger on it. And I was like, how the fuck did I do... Like, how the fuck... I, I do this every fucking day. How the fuck did today I do this? So, we're off to a great start today. Long story short. Um, I'm not entirely sure what purpose those holes serve, either. That's the other issue. Is that I'm looking at this, and I'm like, what... What purpose do these serve? What what do they what do they do? And I'm not entirely sure what it is. Um, but whatever. That was a weird thing to get saw. Um, so here we are. And um, see, here's the thing: is that as I'm watching this episode, I, I saw the, the the commercial for this episode, and I thought Barry was really dumb for this. Because it's like, okay, so this is, you know, Barry and, what's it called? It, it is, the, the episode's entire thing is about, um, after last season with the still force and all of that, Barry is afraid of losing Iris, so he, he creates a book um, of everything that's going to happen for the rest of their lives, and uh, that book is going to tell them um, everything you need to know. About everything's gonna happen. So I was like, oh, okay. So just, I was like, oh, so today, say yes when, um, just say yes today. And then it's, you know, it's this, it's the whole thing about, it's a question of uh, being bought up by Cat Grant. And you get a nice few Supergirl references because it's like, oh, Cat Grant, you know, Cat Co. And then, um, the other thing was, uh, the idea of, um, what's it called? The idea of, uh, who was the other one that, that, that went in? Um, um, and it's like at one point, um, oh, did Kara tell you? And she wasn't supposed to tell you. It's like, okay, well, whatever. Um, and I'm like, I thought Kara was off world. Maybe we'll get Kara this season. Maybe that'll be the big surprise. I think she's the only one who we know is not, like, we don't know if she's coming back. I think everyone else is coming back. Like, fucking Stephen and Mel is coming back. And, and all of that. Maybe Kara's coming back in one episode, too. Um, would be cool. Um, because her and her and Grant, just their on-screen chemistry is so great every time. Uh, you get Supergirl and Flash on the, in, in the same thing. Be it you know the musical episode in season two, be or season three, be it the um, the episode about um, what's it called? The episode about um, when they first meet in, on Supergirl in season one um, of Supergirl. Um, anytime they work together in, in the crossover, it's always, it's always entertaining. Um, but they just have a great camaraderie together, so maybe the hook, maybe she'll come back to. Um, I like this costume design for the new Captain Boomerang a lot more than the original one. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the, like, because I think he only appeared in the second part of the Arrowverse Flash crossover, which was on the Arrow episode in season three. Um... Or, yeah, Arrow Season 3. Um, so, I, I mean, that's pretty cool. Like, I, I like all of that. Um, I, I'm a fan of the Groundhog Day episodes. Uh, it would have made more sense if they premiered this episode last week. Um, you know, on Groundhog Day, maybe. Um, that Maybe that's me, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking. But I would have thought that maybe you premiered this episode on Groundhog Day. Um, because considering the episode takes place on... April 1st, um, so, you know, or February 1st, so it's like, uh, well, you know, it, it, it kind of just 
market itself, but apparently they wanted to do something different. Um, so I'm watching all of this, and um, I see the first thing I thought when I saw the trailer was, "Oh, Barry's stupid," um, because it's like, on what fucking planet would Iris or anyone for that matter want to? have their entire life planned out for them with no spontaneity, no free will. It's just, here's what's happening for the rest of your life, laid out day by day. And to an extent, Iris has already experienced that because it's like, her getting married to Barry felt less like a organic progression of this friendship into a marriage and more of a Iris slowly relenting and just being like, fuck, I guess. Like, the future says I'm married to him and he goes to this alternate timeline and and we're married. It's like, fuck, I guess that's what we're supposed to do, so let's just do it. So I think that, like, for him to be like, okay, like, I I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense for Barry, because, like, it's worked out for him so far to be like, well, Iris, the future says we gotta do this, so we gotta do this, but for for the sake of, um, for the sake of, for the sake of, uh, what's it called, Iris and and all that, it's like, I, I, I don't think she'd be down for just, here's everything we're doing for the rest of our lives, and, you know, bask in it. Um, so that'll be, you know, that's an interesting kind of, uh, approach to, to it. But I think that the story being more grounded in this is what, um, what's it called? This is what, uh, um, you know, this is him responding to the last two seasons being what they were, or last, you know, really three seasons, because it goes back to crisis, like, him responding to all of that and, like, you know, everything being weighed on him where it's like, no, we will follow this exactly because I cannot lose you until you're supposed to be lost and we're not gonna fuck around with the timeline. Um, and it is, it is an, like, it's an interesting, you know, approach. Now, again, there's that old adage where it's like, any superhero movie could be solved by the superhero going to therapy, which in this case would have been, you know, useful, um, because that would have alleviated this problem before he made the book, but whatever, he didn't do that, so what, moving on, um, and I think that Iris expressing, no, I don't want that, is kind of, you know, in line, too, where it's like, she's willing to take that risk, and I think that by signing on for this for as long as she has, she shows she's willing to take that risk, uh, and not just sit there and be, you know, she's not there, uh, 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 like, oblivious to the risk of being the Flash's wife, and I think that's an interesting kind of approach, um, and I, I think that the, that's kind of an interesting dichotomy they've created these two characters, but I just feel like it's the kind of thing where Barry should have kept it to himself, and I think that had they had a full 26 episode season, they could have played with that, um, but they're only doing 13 episodes, so I think they kind of have to get this and get this going, um, and start laying into the, the season-long mystery, which... I think they showed their hand a little too quick on, if I'm being honest. Um, Because at this point, we know who the... I mean, look, we knew who the villain was. That's that picture that leaked a few months back. And I think I've said it. I'm not... Here's the, the weird thing, is that I'm not inherently against Batwoman being Red Death in the Arrowverse. I think it could have worked well if Barry had interacted with Ryan Wilder at any point prior to this. Because what this... Here's the thing that this season should have been. And I and again, another rewrite on the fly. We've seen Barry deal with, you know, Thawne. We've seen Barry deal... like, And that's his past. We've seen Barry deal with an alternate Flash... And it's like, oh, so this is what Barry would be if he was one bad day. Like, this is this is Barry in an alternate universe, basically, when we think about Zoom. Then we have Barry dealing with himself. What would Barry do, literally, if everything went to shit? And that is Savitar. And then we have, you know, who was the next one? Season 4 was The Thinker. And it's like, okay, so The Thinker, you have Barry dealing with... Um, you know, you have this guy who, uh, who, who, who 
knows everything and has everything laid out, which is another reason why you should have seen this as a really terrible idea, but whatever. Um, and it's like, okay, I, I, I get what you're, like, all of that kind of works. And I think that for the, the kind of running through line, back to the pilot even, like, I think that that's what this show, because this is the last season, we know it's going to be the last season, this show, um, the pilot is, it opens with Barry narrating, and then at the end of the pilot, we find out Barry is narrating, because he's telling his story to Oliver, and he's explaining what happened to Oliver, because he and Oliver have this relationship because of the, whether they met the first time in Arrow, and he's like, look, this is going on now, we have these metahumans, and now I'm one of them, I'm really fast, I'm the Flash, I can do all this shit. And, you know, and then it's like, um, he, he sees, like, Oliver goes and he's like, you gotta be better than me, you gotta be the best of us, and all of that. And, and that is a great moment. And I think that to book and, 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 and ostensibly for the Arrowverse, because they couldn't use Batman for such a long time, or Batman adjacent characters, um, they, they kind of turned Oliver Queen into the universe's Batman. Um, and it's like, okay, that's fine. I think you have to commit to that for this season. Where it's like, up until now, he's been the Batman in this universe. And I think casting him aside and being like, okay, well, we're going to have her be that. Because I, I think that you don't get the emotional resonance of him having to fight an evil alternate version of Ryan Wilder because he's never met... Like, He's met Ryan Wilder. They've shared screen time once, and it's entirely possible that that uh, Javica, uh, Javica, Javica Leslie, and and uh, Greg Gustin didn't actually exist on set at the same time because they don't actually interact. Um, so I, I, I like that's the thing. Like if this was Kara, that would work better. If this was um, if, if this was uh, Sarah Lance, it would work better. If it was, you know, if it was like. Um, what's his name, uh, Mad Dog, or Wild Dog, Mad Dog is a radio personality, if it was Wild Dog, that would make more sense, Oliver would make the most sense, because then you get to bookend it with, it's like, don't, like, be better than me, don't be me, and then him having to fight Oliver, one, for, for it to be the last, you know, thing, that's a great way to book it in the show, um, I, I just feel like, the, the issue I have with this being Bat-adjacent um, is that he doesn't have that connection. Without that connection, that it basically means nothing. You might as well have had any other character fill that role. And it's like, it could have been... like And that's the thing, too. There are so many speedster characters they could have brought in to be, you know, to, to be this. You could have brought in Cobalt Blue and had to be Eddie, that would have been more emotionally resonant. And I know it sounds like I'm saying, like, I know it sounds like I'm saying, well, don't use this person, use these other two white guys, but, like, that's not what it is. I think it's just that this issue where we have, um, if we want to have the characters, you know, if we're wrapping up the show, make it someone relevant to the past of this character. Um, because, like, think about Eddie for a second. Eddie Thawne. I mean, I think he's coming back this season. I think, I think, um... I think we knew he was coming back this season for one or two episodes. Um, but think about Eddie for a second. He got so fucked. So fucked. Where it's like... He, he's, he's like... He, he talks to Eobard Thawne, and Thawne's like... Oh, so you're, you're related to me in the past. And it's like, you know, we have... Our family's a great line of thinkers and, and great musicians and artists and, and scientists and all of this, and it's like, you know what your footnote is? is you're my, you know, you, you, no one remembers you. you. You do nothing significant with your life. Um, and then it's like, and, and the only recourse he has is to kill himself. And he loses everything. And it's like, why the fuck was that? Like, like that was fucked up too. But at the same time, it's like, he he needs a little something extra. I don't know. It just kind of feels a little bit, um, 
a little bit strange to me that they're going this route when you could have done that. You could have done Oliver coming back for that. And Oliver is coming back this season. We saw the set pictures where it's like Oliver and we see Nicholas Spartan and we see uh, Keon Lonsdale as um, as Wally. And it's like, all right, see the people are coming back. I'm all, I'm all for that. It's the last season. Do like a victory lap. Um, and and I'm, I think it's a good idea. I think the problem that we come back to with this is, um, I think that, um, what's all I think that, you know, I, I, I just think that we don't have enough of a, uh, what's it called, enough of a, what was the word I'm looking for here, um, enough of a connection between Barry and Ryan for this to have an emotional arc because they never really met. And I think that, and again, it's going to sound, I know I sound really bad with all this, but it's not what I mean. Like, at least had it been Ruby Rose and had she not been the person by all accounts she was on set. Um, I think that would have resonated a little better because at least Barry had interacted with her at some point. Um, because here's the thing, it's like, the, does, I would assume Barry knows that, that, um, Kate Kane is dead. Like, I assume that, I don't know if that's, or, or is presumed dead, I think now she's the Red Hood. I'm, I'm not caught up on Batwoman, but, like, presumably Barry knows that. Um, so, like, the question I have is why... You know, okay, so so that is, you know, does he, like, and then presumably he knows there's a new Batwoman. Does he know the identity of the new Batwoman? Because it's not like that's public information. So, like, does Barry know who she is? I don't know. And I don't think the show is going to, you know, go out of its way to explain that to you. Um, it's kind of an interesting situation that I kind of want to see explored, but I don't think they necessarily have the time in 13 episodes to explore that. Um, but yeah, I think it's a, um, it's definitely an interesting conundrum that they find themselves in when this, uh, what's it called, when this, uh, when they, when, where, where their show is going. I think that's kind of, you know, the problem I have with it. Um, and it's like, if we're doing this, it's like, I think the other problem I have is that like, the promise of what Red Death brings. Um, where it's like, Red Death is a relatively recent creation. It comes from Dark Knight's Metal, um, which is, you have all of these dark multiverse Batmen who are, um, coming together to, uh, what's it called? To do a, um, you know, to try and take over the regular multiverse, and it's like, alright, cool, so you get the Batman who laughs, who's like the Joker plus Batman, you have Red Death, who is Batman plus the Flash, and there's also an Aquaman plus Batman, there's a Superman plus Batman, um, and it's, you know, it is these dark multiverse Bruce Waynes who go insane and steal the powers of the Justice League, and it's like, this is all really cool stuff, and it's like, and then now that we know where this all leads up to, like, we know this show is, like, we know that, uh, this ends with, um, Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths, um, where Pariah is the bad guy, spoilers for anyone who hasn't read that comic yet, but it's on, you know, it came out last year, um, Pariah is the bad guy and all of that, and it's like, you know, I, I think that, you know, maybe had this gone on a little longer, maybe we would have gotten that, but I don't think it's likely now. The only thing I can think of, the only thing I can think of that could possibly happen is an animated version of this in a miniseries form, kind of like Freedom Fighters the Right or Vixen. I could see them doing a, um, I could see them doing a, an animated Dark Christ on Infinite Earths with, with this cast. Um, that way it's like, oh, okay, we have everyone coming back because they don't have to leave a recording booth or their closet in their house and they can record it from home and do voiceover. Hopefully it sounds a little bit less bad from, uh, what's it called, from, uh, the first one, uh, from Vixen, but it's like, Barry sounds so just bored of the entire proceedings, uh, in his little cameos, like, I would like to see, you know, this happen, um, and 
it's like, if not, it's like, I said this when Crisis came out. Like, you think that you wouldn't have sold tickets to a Fathom event? Like, if you did, you know, parts one and two of Crisis as a movie, and parts two, three, uh, three, four, and five of Crisis as a movie, and sold it as two Fathom events, one in December, one in January, you think you wouldn't have sold tickets? I would have gone to see that in a the theater. Uh, it probably will look pretty shitty, but I would have paid to see that in a the theater. Um, because it was an event. And it was, you know, it, it's the kind of thing where it's like, cut it, or there's definitely a way to cut that down to be feature length. And just do one feature length Crisis on Infinite Earth CW movie. Um, which would have been great. Um, and, and I think that that's also a possibility to, to make some money on this. Um, maybe that happens. I don't think that's likely. But I feel like that's my biggest, my other biggest issue with Red Death being here is that it's it's starting a story that I want to see the end of, but we aren't going to get the end of. We're never going to see the 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 end of this. Where it's like I I, I want to see, I I just want to see this, and it's not going to happen. Um, I, I I would be surprised if the phrase "dark multiverse" is said anywhere in here. I mean, John Wesley Ship is coming back. So, it is possible that, you know, that they, they do return, and, and the Dark Multiverse does, you know, get, get dropped, because he is kind of the sage, like, I know more than you do kind of guy, but I, I could see, you know, I think it's more likely that, um, what's it called, I think it's more likely that, uh, they just don't reference him at all, which is a shame. Um... This, this season is bringing in elements that we, you know, we are looking for over the last few years since Crisis, and they're just not doing any of it, which is a shame, um, because everything's ending. Um, unless Next Star wants to pick it up for HBO Max, which I don't think is likely, but whatever, it would be cool. I think HBO Max is definitely not, because I think that they don't want to have brand confusion. I mean, granted, we still have two Batman. We're going to have two Batman in a few years, but whatever. Um, but we'll wrap up there for today. So, until our next episode, have a great rest of your week.